Hey guys, it's Steph and Joe here, and we're back with another pin video. My aunt had actually um, given us her pin collection, and she has a lot of pins from the early 2000s, so that's what most of this is going to be about. Um, we also have some, the end section is going to have some pins that we have um, counterfeiting. So we'll kind of show you the do's and don'ts, what to look out for if you're in the park collecting, and we'll go from there. But these right here are um, part of the Disney design collection. And you can see the Tigger, we got Mickey, Minnie right here, and Tinkerbell, which they're all pretty, they're really large pins. Um, you know, I think they're kind of technically before the pin trading became official, but I still thought they're pretty cool and worth to sh worthwhile to show. Okay, and next up we also have some of the Countdown to the Millennium pin set. We actually have a video where we show the entire collection um, that's already uploaded, but it's still cool to kind of see these on their original backings. Got Tinkerbell, Piglet, looks like one from Bambi, and then the classic Mickey Mouse pin. Okay, and we're back with a couple of more uh, pins from the Countdown to Millennium set in the original packaging. Here's a Tigger pin, Lady and the Tramp, Snow White. Vintage Minnie Mouse, 1928, and Chippendale from 1943. Definitely a neat series, so always nice to kind of review all the pins that were released as a part of this set. All right, and next up we have a variety of different Disney characters from several various um, Disney films here. Jiminy Cricket, Figaro, Thumper, and several of the characters from Aristocats. Okay, and we're back here. We've got a couple more pins to highlight. A um, couple of Tigger pins here at the top. This one um, is from Stephanie's Aunt Kathy. Her first name was Kathy, so that's kind of a cool pin. And down here on the bottom, the train pin is actually a limited edition pin. I think it's five or six hundred, so that's kind of a neat, uh, unique throwback pin. And then a uh, Mickey's Fire Department pin, kind of a classic and something a little different as well. All right, and right here are just a few, um, looks like promotional pins that they kind of would give you. I think on the back of it, it said the price was actually a dollar for those pins, but they're still nonetheless very cool. Um, all the way to the right here is also a Rainforest Cafe Orlando pin. And another thing, too, just to touch up on, um, the price of the pins. A lot of the pins that were um, from my aunt uh, that she got in the early 2000s were $6.00. So, and you can tell now, a lot of the pins have gone up in price. Some even doubling um, to limited editions that you can get for, gosh, it depends on the set, but you can go pretty pricely, even $50 for a jumbo pin or whatnot. But definitely, it shows the price inflation there. And here's some pins. They're not from the Millennium set, but they are to celebrate the year 2000 um, and the turn of the century here. A um, couple of duplicates on this one, but the 2000 pin with the Epcot ball and the Sorcerer Mickey magic wand. And then another one here on the right, um, the pin that says Happy New Year. That's actually a limited edition of 20000 for the year 2000. And the last one here, um, some of the Fab Five characters, Mickey, Donald, and Goofy, um, turn of the century pin as well. So definitely some, some nice pieces to the collection. Alright, and these are actually some really other nice pins from early 2000s that were a great addition to our collection. Uh, the Walt Disney World. Kind of see the four parks in there. Animal Kingdom, Magic Kingdom, Epcot, and Hollywood Studios. This one I really like. It's a pretty big pin. The Millennium Village Gifts to the World 2000. Very cool. And this one right here. Uh, four parks, one world. All right, next up, uh, 100 Years of Magic. Walt Disney World, kind of classic pin there. Animal Kingdom, which I always thought was kind of cool because if you could see, it's even on the logo on the park, the dragon. I know they don't really have anything about dragons in there, but yet they still have that in the park emblem, which looks cool. And then the Walt Disney World Studios. Epcot. And the Magic Kingdom. 
Okay, and now I want to talk about something that's a little uh, a little disappointing and kind of a, a black mark on sometimes the hobby of pin trading, and that's counterfeit pins. And as I know, uh, probably most of us avid pin collectors are aware of, there is starting to become an increasing market for um, fraudulent and um, fake scrapper pins um, out in the market as well. And sometimes, I guess as the story goes, if it's too good to be true, then it usually is, unfortunately. And these were four um, counterfeit pins that we came across when we were trading in the parks. The first one we got um, in the top uh, left-hand corner here was the stitch pin. And that was the first one we got. We were trading at the Magic Kingdom at the circus tent um, for the Big Top Circus. And I got one of these pins, and I was really stoked and really excited. I knew it was... Um, kind of a unique looking pin and I traded it with a cast member um, so we were pretty excited about that I didn't really look into it too much but then the next following day uh, my folks and myself and Stephanie uh, were pin trading at Hollywood Studios uh, and we came across these other three the Chip and Dale pin the Goofy and Mickey pin and then another stitch pin so I'm thinking okay you know what are the chances that you know we get four of these pins that are all part of this unique um, you know, um, soda fountain series that are all limited edition 300s. And, um, you know, we did a little bit more research. I examined the pens a little bit more closely and unfortunately came to find that they were fraudulent. Actually, we should also mention that the three that we got were also, um, we treated with a guest member. So it wasn't with a cast member. We actually got the three on um, one lanyard with just one guest. So it was kind of like a three, four, um, and he, you know, and the funny thing was, which we kind of thought was weird even after we did this, he was really excited to get rid of them. And at first we thought, well, these are really cool. You know, we saw another one. Hey, why not? We actually gave him, because we thought they were good pins. Uh, I don't know, like maybe. Probably like eight or nine, you know, of our pins. To get um, these three. To get these when trading. Because <laughs> they looked like, really cool. Yeah, and like I said, if it's if it's too good to be true, then unfortunately, you know, sometimes you need to take another another look. Um, and and we'll, we'll go a little bit more in depth here as to how you can tell um, some of these counterfeit pins, some of the obvious reasons that you'll usually find on other videos for YouTube or online is, you know, extreme discoloration on the pins itself. If the original pin, um, you know, has a certain coloring technique or something like that um, you know then typically if you're seeing variations in color if you're seeing rough edges on the pins um, some t some sort of shape um, shape distortion or something like that then it's probably a fake pin um, and we also kind of determined that for sure that these were fakes by simply looking on the back and, and we'll get um, into a second here a little bit more about that okay so let's take a quick look here on the back of this one soda fountain pen. Everything looks okay so far, okay? So it shows Disney Soda Fountain and Studio Store, limited edition of 300 Disney China. Now there's one thing you're going to notice here. Instead of Hollywood, look at the look at the lettering. It's an N. It's Nollywood. Um, it's not a, a true H. It's an N. It looks, you know, from the naked eye, when you look at it very closely, it can look like an H. But when you zoom in, um, as Steph is doing here, you can clearly tell that it's not an H. It's an N. And it says, <laughs> Disney Soda Fountain and Studio Store, Nollywood, instead of Hollywood. And this is a thing about, you know, fake pins or scrapper pins. It's not illegal for these these pins to be manufactured in China. It's unethical. But um, essentially how these counterfeiters protect themselves is um, simply they, this is not a true reproduction of an official Disney trading pin. If you actually take one letter and distort one letter um, in terms of the backing and how it reads on the back of the pen, then it, it's clearly a variation of the official Disney trading pin. And that is typically how a lot of counterfeiters um, will get by with without getting in much trouble or, or without getting caught when they're mass producing and counterfeiting these pins. So just kind of a heads up out there to fellow collectors. This is really our our first big um, encounter with counterfeit pins, unfortunately. Um, we learned a lot after this trip about things to look for, um, things to take note of when you're trading with, with cast members or even other guests especially um, as to ways that you can kind of sometimes be tricked into thinking you have a great pin and a great find. Um, only to find out that it's not a true official Disney trading pin. So 
definitely some things to um, keep in mind as you move forward and train the parks. And I know too that they also say that if you are very concerned about getting a counterfeit pin, and um, really the only way to really make sure you don't get a counterfeit is to buy, I guess, from the stores. Yep. The only true way, the only true way to know you have an official Disney pin, unfortunately, is to, you know, buy one physically from Disney. If it's on their shelves, if it's a part of their merchandise, um, you know, then it's legit. It's obviously Disney approved. Um, it's been reviewed. It's on the on the racks for sale. Um, you should be good to go with all of that said. So um, just another update. Steph and I will actually be returning to Walt Disney World in Florida um, for three days in January. Uh, a nice surprise by my sweetheart here taking me for my 30th birthday um, mm. for a couple of days to the parks in Florida. So uh, we will be um, in Orlando, I believe, January 23rd, 24th, and 25th of 2015. So just a three-day trip. Um, we just have the three-day base tickets. Um, so just trying to you know get a couple of days in, break up the winter here in Michigan, um, do some pin trading, um, go and experience some of the rides in the parks, and and most importantly, um, you know we're looking to obviously post more videos, provide you um, some additional footage for all of our subscribers as well as the things that you may want to see on property. So um, upon review of this video, you know in the comment section, please let us know um, what you would like us to show. You know we would be happy to share some of our vacation with you um, so if there's anything specifically that you want to see um, you know let us know